Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want to play this for the sake of healing. Many of us do not realize how psychologically scarred we are. Many of the non-white races have had a psych job done that has cursed us throughout generations on top of generations. And I wish I could hug this woman right here for exposing the truth behind the devastation that has taken hold of the darker races. Listen to this woman's confession. My name's Farrell Winfrey. I live in Rowan County in East Tennessee. I'm here because I recognize the white supremacy system of racism. I recognize that and with the acknowledgement that it exists, then there falls on me a responsibility to try to do something to stop that, to cause that discrepancy in, um, in privilege and in justice and um, when it becomes your responsibility, then you have to try to do something. And I'm here to learn. I came uh, because of the names of the people that I saw that were going to be here. And I knew I could learn from them. I'm white. Now, when I say that, my people a long time ago came up with these little check marks that we have to check which we are white and in reality it's white or non-white you know they they break that down into a lot of we break that down into a lot of different uh different groups but the the fact that i do not know in my ancestry of any one being in my ancestry the the line i don't know of anyone being there that was non-white so i put that little check mark where white is and then that makes me the problem so i'm here to try to learn how i can try to solve that problem okay Yes, over the last couple of days, I've had the opportunity to participate in formal group discussions uh, with you, with other white people and other non-white people. And I must say that in my experience in dialoguing about racism um, with white people and non-white people, I have never experienced a person who classifies themselves as white being so honest and forthright and providing helpful insights about racism to non-white people. So I want to say we appreciate your participation and your disclosures to us towards the objective of solving the problem, ending racism. That, that adage of the most I can do is the least I can do. See, that's a reality. Um, what we have done for hundreds of years, it can, it can never be undone with words, but words can bring an understanding and until that, until that understanding comes that brings an awareness to my people of what they have and are doing, things are not ever going to change. The changes have to come from action, but the action have to be brought about by words. So I praise God if, if that has happened and if I've been able to be a part of that, then I, then I praise Him for it and I thank you for saying it. Yeah, it's been my experience that when people who are classified uh, 
has non-white dialogue with people who classify themselves as white about racism, emotion tends to really run high. Yes. And so I, um, I really appreciate that you believe, as we believe, as you stated, that truth is more important than comfort because oftentimes non-white people feel embarrassed and white people feel offended when a discussion um, about racism occurs. So um, we look forward to doing what I believe is the Creator's will, and that is for us to live in truth, not yes. in denial and deceit. Yes. And I recognize that that is necessary in order to end racism. Could you begin by stating um, what your perspective is about the existence of racism? Just talk about what what it is. I agree with the um, with the principle, um, the theory, the principle um, that racism is prejudice plus power. Um, I had a conversation yesterday with um, a black man that, and he said that he knew some of his people who were racist, and and I I talked with him about that because without the power to take that prejudice and actively place it into position to cause people to do or not do, then it is simply just prejudice. And, and I believe that, so that's the premise from which I come, that uh, racism, you have to have that power in order for there to be uh, racism. And most white people would, would look at me and say, I don't have any power. But, but we do have power. We have power just getting up in the morning and looking in the mirror and not having to think about race. That places us in, into a, a position to where our minds are clear and that it's a problem that we don't have to deal with. We don't think about it because we don't have to think about it. It's not something that completely controls our lives. So there, from the very beginning, when we wake up in the morning, then, then we, have, um, we have an advantage, and that advantage comes from the color of the skin. Um, when we go into a store and, um, and, and we're not assumed that we're going to be a shoplifter simply because of the color of our skin, that is an advantage. When I walk down the street, and I'm more safe. Now that's not saying nothing would happen ever to me, but I would be more safe walking down the street alone than you would be. That is racism because of that unequal playing field that's there that gives me advantage simply because of the color of my skin. Then that's, that is that's what's wrong, see? The fact that there's anything out there. I, I told, see, see, I've been accused of um, betraying my people, um, uh, my race, my faith, um, my gender, you know, everything, um, because of, of the, the beliefs that I have that when we take advantage of those things, then we are being white supremacists. Because most people, when they when when they think about someone that's white supremacist, they're thinking about the guy in the fatigues and he's in the woods and he's shooting and you know target. But but I am being white supremacist when I accept uh, an establishment that gives me more than it than it gives you. If I know that, if this is something that I'm aware of, and I take advantage of that, 
and that makes me, I believe, that puts me in the category of being a white supremacist.